हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज उमाकंद वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू माय चैनल सो आई एम विथ ए वेरी न्यू कंटेंट सो इन दिस मैनर वील डिस्कस ऑल अबाउट द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंटल टेक्निक्स अवेलेबल फॉर द एक्सपेरिमेंटल कंटेंट्स मैटर फिजिक्स ऑफ द मेटेरियल साइंस सो आई वुल लाइक टू टेल यू वन थिंग दैट इन दिस मैनर आई विल डिस्कस ऑल द एक्सपेरिमेंटल टेक्निक्स एंड द अबाउट द इंस्ट्रूमेंट हाउ टू यूज इट एंड व्हाट आर द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट योर मेटेरियल यू कैन ड्रॉ फ्रॉम द इंस्ट्रूमेंट एंड हाउ टू इंटरप्रेट द डाटा कमिंग फ्रॉम द इंस्ट्रूमेंट दैट इज द प्राइम फोकस ऑफ माई वीडियो दैट इज आई वॉन्ट टू लेट यू नो दैट हाउ द इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज इंपोर्टेंट ओके एंड व्हाट आर द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट योर मेटेरियल यू कैन ड्रॉ फ्रॉम द इंस्ट्रूमेंट दैट इज द प्राइम फोकस ऑफ माई एरिया so in this video i will discuss basically two experimental techniques that is more those are mostly important uh, like uh, xrd and uh, scm so xrd and scm i would like to uh, give a brief discussion about the xrd and scm and what are the information you can draw from the uh, this instrument and this experiment so let's start the session and have a uh, great uh, time ahead so first of all this is xrd uh, set of like uh, x ray diffraction as you know Uh, this is a basic fundamental uh, techniques in order to know the crystal structure of the material so this is depending upon the bragg's law and uh, there is a diffraction depending upon the planes available on the crystal there is a diffraction and for the inter uh, for the co constructive interference you get a peak on the xrd which indicate the crystal orientation and a uh, different planes orientation in the material so this is the uh, setup for uh, xrd this is the experimental setup or the instrument you can say so here is the sample holder is there and two detect uh, one detector is there and we, this is the x ray source so x ray will coming from this x ray source and you know the basic construction of the x ray how it is produced from the electron gun and there is the arrangement like heavy metal is there so whenever high energetic electron fall on the material there is ejection of the x ray and this x ray is incident on the material and after the reflection uh, so you get the intensity and uh, which is detected by this detector okay so depending upon the condition for the constructive interference you get the peak on the xrd pattern so what are the information you can get from the xrd this is important question so from xrd basically you can get the information about the crystal structure of the material that is crystal structure means either it is single crystalline either it is single crystalline or it is polycrystalline or it is nano crystalline or it is amorphous so this is the basic information that can you, that you can draw from the crystal structure so then lattice constant because lattice constant is very important so as you know d is equal to 1 by h square by a square plus k square by b square plus l square by c square root over so after you uh, matching your xrd peak with the jcp dates data you can have the hkl value with you so you can uh, draw the abc value or for the hexagonal closed packet you can draw the value of a and c so like this you can draw the uh, you can uh, get the information about the lattice constant so then interplanar spacing so if you have the a b c with you then you can easily draw interplanar spacing that is the space between two spacing between two conjugative planes in the miller planes in the material so then you can draw the information of the strain and stress produced in the material this is important so in order to find the stress and strain produced in the material you have to draw the williamson hall plot then you can get the information about stress and strain produced but the basic thing i can uh, tell you like suppose stress is present in your material how you can conclude this is important so suppose this is the peak for your material as per the jcp dates data suppose this is the peak for the 2 theta is equal to 20 degree so for the 2 theta is equal to 20 degree you must get a peak like this but whenever you uh, get the xrd data suppose you get this peak for the 2 theta of 21.5 degree or 20 20.5 degree or 21 degree 21 degree okay so why this peak is shifted from 20 to 20.5 degree or 21 degree so this make a question why this peak shift towards the right or left this shift is always not towards the right it's maybe to the left also because it depend upon the nature of the strain okay either lattice is contracting or it is uh, expansing okay either lattice expansion is there or contraction is there if contraction is there so peak should uh, come to the left side and if the expansion is there so peak will move to the right side so this is the strain this strain may be instrumental may be depending temperature depending upon the pressure and environmental condition strain may be there so 
peak shift is indicating that there is some strain produced or stress produced. So this stress and strain can be uh, measured from the Williamson Hall plot. Okay. So then the presence of the defect can be also detected from the X-ray diffraction. How? If there is some defect, if there is some defect present, suppose you know from the JCPDS data, JCPDS data, your material should have five peak in between zero to ten degree. Let in between zero to ten degree, your material should have five peak. Let this is one peak, one peak, three, four, and five peak. But whenever you are making extra D measurement, you are getting uh, number of peak is seven between theta is equal to zero to ten degree. You know the material should have 5, num number of peaks should be 5 in between theta to 0 to 10 degree, but you are getting 7 peaks in between 0 to 10 degree. Why these two extra peaks come to the feature? These two extra peaks will indicate that there is some defect present in the material which contributing to the extra uh, extra peak in the extra department. One thing you should remember that if number of peak is less as per the uh, as comparison to the dissipated data, there is no problem. Okay, because some orientation may be missing whenever you are from you are going from bulk to the thin field or nano crystal to the bulk, there may be missing some peak. It, it, it will indicate that there is no orientation for this particular uh, scale value or the particular two theta. Okay, but there should not be extra peak. If extra peak come to the picture, picture, then it will be problematic. That will indicate that their system having some defect. Okay. So defect can be detected by the presence of extra number of peak in the extra department. That's it. Okay, and this is the basic arrangement for the XRD, like uh, crystal lattice are arranged like this, and uh, your X ray is falling like this, and these are the reflected ray. So, depending upon the uh, condition for the uh, diffraction, that is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta, which is equal to the which is known as the Bragg's condition. For this condition, you are getting the peaks in the XRD pattern. So, here I am showing the XRD pattern for copper oxide and a nickel doped copper oxide. So, this is the JCPDS data here uh, in the first figure, this is JCPDS data, the standard value, and uh, we are matching the XRD of nickel oxide and copper of nickel oxide. If you see, then there are some possible orientation of 111, 200, 220, and 311222 for the copper of nickel oxide. So this peak is matching with the JCPDS data, so we can conclude that our material is successfully successfully growth grown, or there is a Successful growth of the material in the as per the required orientation. Okay, these are the preferable orientation. From the peak, you should conclude that the intensity of 200 peak is more. What does it indicate? It indicates that most of the orientation are along 200. That is the preferable orientation of the material is 200. Okay, but also there is the orientation possible in 220 and 311, 222, and 111. So that's why this material is polycrystalline nature because number of peaks are more than one. So this is not a single crystal material, it is a polycrystalline material. So this is the brief description of the XRD data and brief description about the XRD. So this is the cause, that's why we are using XRD in order to get that lot of information about the st crystal structure of the material, strain, stress producing the material, interplanar spacing, lattice constant and the presence of the defect. So this is all about XRD. So move to the next session. So next technique is scanning electron microscopy. This is most important for the people those are working in the powder that is bulk material and the thin film technology. Okay. For the people those are working in the nano, nano scale and the quantum dot scale. So from them, I think TAM is most important, tunneling electron microscopy. I will discuss it in the next session in a brief manner. So come to the same that is scanning electron microscopy. So this is the basic fundamental about the scanning electron microscopy. There are some electron uh, gun is there which produce the electron beam. Then there is anode arrangement is like that and condenser lens is there which converts the electron beam to the particular area. Then scan, scanning coil, coil is there and objective lens is there. And this, these are the lens which is controlled by the magnetic field as well as electrostatic field. Then sample holder is there and whenever this electron beam fall on the material, there are two detectors, one is Robinson detector and uh, other is Hartfest detector. One detector is to con collect the secondary electron and one is to collect the backscattered electron. These two electrons are most important for the 
morphology point of view because secondary electron always give the information about the surface morphology that is how the surface it is is there any nanoparticles is there any nanostructure or something else grains is there irregularity is there what is there in the morphology this information is always contributed from the secondary electron and the contrast that is the black and white contrast is given by the back scattered electron okay and here is the uh, here is the uh, scanning electron microscopy setup uh, like this this is the practical setup the, this is a detector and this is a detector you have to keep your sample inside and you have to measure the morphology or see the morphology up by uh, moving deeper and deeper like you can scan your uh, sample in 10 micrometer 1 micrometer 100 nanometer and 1 nanometer also so depending upon the resolution of your instrument you can scan your sample and you can go to the deeper of the sample okay so you can scan in 10 micrometer 1 micrometer suppose your morphology is clearly visible in 1 micrometer so you don't need to go 100 nanometer suppose your material is such that you have to scan the material up to 100 nanometer then you can be uh, capable of observing your structures or nano scale matter particles or structure do, do behave. so you have to go up to 10 nanometer okay so here i am showing a number of picture of uh, different material so you have you can have a great details idea about the how people are working on the scanning electron microscopy so first this is a nanoparticle scanning electron microscopy where you can see there is nanoparticles are agglomerated and connected with each other there is a clear indication that nanoparticles are formed in your material then this is a zinc oxide nanorod you can see the vertical aligned nanorods are there but they are not uh, well aligned they are some inclination is there but they are still nanorods with a hexagonal cross section if you see this is a hexagonal cross section so this is the nanorod from zinc nanorod uh, zinc nanorod so then this is a graphene oxide nano sheet if you see clear carefully then these are the seeds because graphene uh, graphene oxide is a 2d material so it have uh, planes uh, so it have the uh, seeds on the 2d uh, surface so you can have the uh, morphology like seed that's why it is known as a graphene oxide nano sheet so these are the nano sheet is well formed and they are interconnected because all the transport occurs along the nano sheet of the graphene oxide okay uh, then this is the nano flowers of certain material the how a beautiful nano flower is grown on the material you can have the uh, morphology by doing this scanning electron microscopy then this is so famous carbon nanotube you know how, how carbon nanotube is so important in medical science as well as day to day application so there is nano tubes of uh, carbon so this morphology is observed by doing the scanning electron microscopy of the material but the scale is different suppose i don't know it is uh, this is this is 100 nanometer scale that means they have to scan this sample up to 100 nanometer depth so this is a uh, this is uh, up, up to 1 micrometer scan this sample uh, has observed scanning electron microscopy up to 1 micrometer scale then this is also in 1 micrometer scale so here uh, scanning uh, scale is not mentioned and this is also for 1 micrometer okay because in one micrometer the people are capable of observing the morphology so they don't need to go up to 100 nanometer 10 nanometer but here the people have gone to 10 nanometer because uh, the morphology is clear visible when they move to the 100 nanometer that's the point depending upon your requirement you have to scan your sample that's it all about scanning electron microscopy so from finally from the scanning electron microscopy you can get the information about the surface morphology uh, you can uh, observe the structure that is nano rods, nano wires, nano fibers, nano uh, flowers, the, whatever you the structure grown in your material, you can observe that is the nano structure. So, average grain size you can conclude because depending upon the size, you can draw the uh, Gaussian <coughs> distribution and you can uh, find the average size of the grain. Then, information about the uh, connection between grain that means your grains is connected, your particles connected or not, is there any breakage, is there any cracks or they are oil arranged, the film is dense or not, you can get all the information about the film, your material, your powder, whatever your sample is, you can get the morphological details from the scanning electron microscope. So this is all about the scanning electron microscope and XRD. So hope you got some uh, important information about uh, how to uh, draw the interpretation, how to interpret the data coming from the XRD as well as the scanning electron microscope. So the incoming session, I will discuss about uh, more to, to now, um, more experimental techniques uh, like uh, AFM, TEM, uh, whatever possible. So we'll have a session like this. So thank you so much for watching my video. Have a great day. Thank you so much.